Hi everyone, welcome to Doodle Days episode 3. <clears throat> I showed you I'm using my normal standard primer I've been using if you've been following along so far. And it's a precise B5, I believe. And here yeah, I'm just doing another pre done sketch. Um, I have increased the speed on this one because I wanted to see how it would affect. Um, the video length, the quality, and the time, because I think the other ones that I've done may have been a little bit more on the slow side, and I wanted to speed things up because I know your guys' time is very valuable to me and to you, and we all have things that we need to do, and there's so many people that we each follow. To keep up with everybody, having really long videos sometimes could really be quite tedious, and I will start weeding people out. <laughs> um, I hate to say it, but it's true. I mean, we all do it. It's just life is busy. We have things we need to get done. And sometimes you don't have all the time that you really want to sit down and watch people. Um, so I do want to try to speed my videos up. And so you're not missing out on the quality of the video or anything, but it's not taking that much time away from you in all hopes. <laughs> Anyway, here I am doing basic mandalas, which are just circles, which I have used my uh, compass to draw. I believe I use my stapler compass for this one. I do have a helix compass, both I like. It just depends which one I grab or which one I actually have built a uh, lead for, because I have the ones that you have the tiny pieces of lead that you actually insert into the bottom, not the one that you can actually grip your pen or pencil with. Which I may actually look into because I'm kind of intrigued to try to uh, to try one of those. I never had one. Um, anyway, here I'm going to do this one large mandala in the bottom left hand corner of my paper, and I'm doing a specific pattern. And I have, as you can see, there are multiple little mandalas spread out on here on this page. What I'm going to do is repeat the pattern. So you don't have to pick. You know, new patterns for each item that's on your page. You can reuse the same one and you'll see. I think it looks pretty good. And it kind of makes it more cohesive and everything kind of flows together and it looks like a finished piece than one that's more sporadic. Although I do like the looks of ones of multiple different patterns buried throughout the page. Or this is just another option for you. So you don't have to feel overwhelmed with, oh, I don't know that many patterns. I don't really repeat it. It does actually look pretty nice when you repeat them too. So it's just another option for you to keep in mind if you're going to do your own doodles. You don't have to be um, constantly alternating um, new patterns. You can use them and make them still look really nice in a finished piece. I have been quite busy trying to learn this audio stuff. I know that the last video had some audio issues. I'm not quite sure what happened, but I'm hoping to have remedied that this time around. Um, I didn't have my, I guess, where I had my settings set before, I just assumed that they were already set. But here on my computer with this Windows 10 stuff um, actually changed all my settings and set them back, and I didn't realize. So I'm hoping that this has that I have fixed the situation and am able to have a better sound uh, quality for you all this round. I didn't want to go back and have to redo the last one. I really didn't talk about anything all that important in this. You're really not missing that much. Um, I did notice that uh, it was quite low sounding, so I'm hoping this round is much better. Um, but definitely let me know in the comments. And like I said, I will keep at it. <laughs> Here I'm doing just a black line to make it, to make the other part pop, so this way you can see that those little thin lines actually do add some dimension to the drawing and actually make it kind of feel like it's lifting off the page, which I really like. I like that aspect of it. And I'm starting the same way I did in the center of the first one, and I'm doing them as kind of divided into like pie shapes, if you want to go back to um elementary years in school or doing my math assignments, which I really don't care for math all that much. I can do it, but it's not my favorite subject. So here I'm doing a few 
one dollars at a time and to I guess cut down the amount of time that I spend going from one dollar to one dollar and not actually having to put my hand in the ink and maybe have a chance of smudging it because I did not put a paper underneath my hand to keep from smudging and I also don't need to like keep the oils off the page. I figured this is just kind of my personal doodle page, you know, doodle book. I'm not doing it to, you know, sell the art or anything, so I don't really mind if my oil my hand oil is on the page and then, you know, the pen doesn't feel as nice and it is a little bit of maybe a more. Um but if I do make anything for you know, for if I'm gonna plan on selling I do use a piece of paper and then to keep the smudging from happening and also to keep my oils off the page. You can also use um, a little bit of hand sanitizer. If you use a little bit of hand sanitizer before you do your doodles, um, which I, I tend to do anyway because it does take the excess uh, sweating and oiling and oiling and oiling and oiling and oiling and oiling I can't pronounce um, from your hands so it doesn't transfer to your work. And I do that on occasion, not all the time, because hand sanitizer does happen to dry your hands out more, and I have enough issues with dryness, especially when I'm in my hair. Anyway, if I get back to that, I guess. Um, let's see. I love doodling. I'm trying to find a way to incorporate a little bit of doodling um, every week. I may not do it every day, but I want to try to do a little bit every week so this way I don't lose the interest in it. If I do it too much, I tend to get tired of it and want to move on to something else and don't want to look at it and I'll put it away and kind of forget about it. So I figured if I do it at least once a week, it'll keep it fresh in my mind where I'm still increasing my skills. But at the same time, I have something to show for it at the end of the week. But I'm not overdoing it either where I'm getting burnout. And I noticed that I've been doing that a lot lately. If you follow my channel, you see I have periods where I've got videos out and then I don't have any. And, and sometimes for quite a while, like months, um, without really a good explanation, you know, my health is on and off, but it's still not. To the point where I need to go that long, or you know, where I have my missing times, but I just get my mojo because I get so set. Um, okay, everybody's making these awesome things with, uh, you know, paper, you know, paper crafts, so I go crazy and burn myself out to trying to keep up with everybody, and I realize, you know, I really, really gotta stop doing that. Um, so I'm gonna do the things that I wanna do when I wanna do them, and if I get caught up in something, hopefully I'll be able to step back and be like, okay, I tried this, I did it once, and now I'm going to go on to something else. Or I'm going to put back on what I want to do instead of focusing all my time just on crochet or knitting or drawing or, you know, paper crafting or tatting or, you know, whatever craft that I got into. I just don't want to... Just focus on that and then burn myself out because that's where I see myself losing the mojo. I don't know if anyone else is like that, if that's why, you know, a lot of us lose our mojo or if it's just, uh, you know, everybody's different. But I do know for me, you know, doing pocket letters like constantly or foot books or just for other, um, oh gosh. Spring freeze, spring fly, whatever you want to call it, I'm um, just stuck in a pencil right now. But any of the crafts that, you know, are big at the time, I get cards, whatnot, I just burn out and I don't want to do them anymore. And then I kind of lose all drive and all excitement to craft. And it really is a big part of my life and it really does help me to stay out of the funk, so to speak. If I can just, ah, today I feel like doing a little bit of crochet, so I'll do a little bit of crochet. Or I want to doodle today, so I'll pull out that stuff and work on it. I really think being able to be flexible like that really helps me. So hopefully you guys don't mind the like 
shifts in my channel between what videos come out. Um, I do love planning, so maybe I'll do some of those, maybe showing like past weeks, or maybe showing the planning, the actual decorating. I don't like showing like everything I've got going on for that week, so I don't like showing where I write in the things I'm going to do because I'm not comfortable with putting all that information out there. Um, after the fact is fine. It's kind of like we don't tell people you're on vacation when you're on vacation because you never know what could happen. Um, I'm not paranoid in that aspect, it's just I'm cautious. And I believe that, especially this day and age, we really need to take some kind of prevention in that aspect. Um, to each their own, you know, but that's kind of how I feel. So I might share, maybe I'll do a planner video showing some past um, things with you because I love seeing those. And I love seeing different crafts and stuff to see if there's something new out there that I might want to try. Because I think every day you should try to learn something new. That's something that, you know, has stuck with me through the year if my father told me when I was younger. is try to learn something every day and it'll keep your mind active. It'll keep you, you know, going to be motivated. And I really believe that to be true. I know it's the days where I can go have the bad days, I don't want to get out of bed with the fibromyalgia and whatnot, but those days really don't get any better for me unless I force myself to get up. Okay, I might not get out of my pajamas, I might sit in them all day, but if I'm up and, you know, get out of the bed and sit on the couch or sit at the table and maybe just scribble on the page or do a little bit on my planner or record in my health journal saying that, yeah, today was a bad day. and Although I didn't get out of my pajamas, I did get out of bed, and I didn't do a whole lot, but I moved. And I did a little bit of exercise, or, you know, whatever I tried to do last year. But, yeah, if anyone's interested in, like, the health aspect of things that I do to help ease some of the issues that I'm going through, and to keep me motivated, to keep me moving, to get me out of bed on those days, or you want, like, a more of, like, a vlog thing, Maybe I would do that, you know, not like weekly, because I really don't think there's a whole lot to talk about, but maybe like once a month or something like that. But if you're interested in like a health life thing, um, because I do know that, you know, a lot of my friends on here do have some, you know, uh, health issues where it's kind of the same thing I've noticed a lot of us have a chronic illness or a, you know, something going on that we're all fighting. So if it's something you're interested in, please definitely. You know, leave a message, comment, you know, comment below, or, you know, have it message me if you don't want to put it out there, because I really understand that. But if some of the things that I do and some of the things that I watch could help somebody, I'm definitely all for that. Um, yeah, okay, off to a different place, I guess. Here I am working on the last mandala, and it's not as big as the first one I worked on, but very close. So I'm just going to repeat the design. As you see, the designs have been repeated on each of these mandalas, and it looks pretty good. I think so, anyway. Each of them stops at a different point, so it gives you a better idea for another mandala. Because you can always take a design that you've done and put it into another sketch that you have um, in the future that you want to do, because it'll give you like a base point, so maybe I want to use that as like if I'm going to draw a sugar skull maybe. I could use that for one of the eyes. I could just pull that mandala out and I already have a reference point of something that I can reuse. So it makes the picture more detailed and it gives new life to that mandala where you can, you know, kind of use it again. Plus if you want to doodle and you don't have the brain power to think to come up with a whole new idea, that takes part of it away and actually Maybe it'll help you get your creative juices going because you can draw from what you've already done. And that's another reason why I really want to try to keep um, my drawing books, sketchbooks intact and keep myself from the terror and go away when you're not completely satisfied with something. I've been good. Keeping myself accountable. If I remember, I will state how good I am doing by saying, okay, still haven't worked anything out yep, at this point. I know it's only like, I believe it's the third one, the third drawing in, yeah. And I haven't looked it out in that, honest to God, believe me, that is very good for me. 
Um, I know a lot of you struggle with the, I don't know where to start, um, I would just in tangles, uh, tangles, whatever you want to call them, stuff with mandalas. You just start with a circle. If you don't have a compass, don't worry. Grab, um, a bottle cap, uh, saucers, your little, um, dipping trays, uh, let's see, your plates, anything, you know, anything you got that is in that shape. I mean, you guys don't even have to be circles. You know, if you got square plates, like, I have square salads and little plates, because I really love them. <laughs> um, you can use those, um, anything, cups, you know, and your coffee mug, your tea mug, your tea cup, whatever you want to do. I mean, anything will kind of work. Um, Tupperware, I mean, they're like, you know, and here I'm adding some leaves to it just to give it a little bit more, to make it feel not so, I guess, just plain and round. But adding the leaves and the vine type shape is a sense of, hey, this is like a, maybe an abstract flower. And I'm really into these, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope to see you all very soon in the next one. Here, as I finish this up, stippling, and sometimes I'm stippling, I'll, uh, you know, sign my name, you know, uh, arch name that I put on here. So here's a quick close-up look for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up, and a subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all soon. Bye.